hello welcome hello. this is a uh, picking brains podcast my name is charlie and we have meg with us lee and rosie Hi. and today uh we're going to be discussing the pandora network which is an experience that lee and rosie uh were characters in and an experience that me and meg uh, took part in and we really did enjoy it it was a lot we love it was fun. so good yeah it was it was it really was innovative and such a fab way uh, to kind of keep your mind off this lockdown. Yeah, um, keeps you busy. Yeah, it was really good. Um, so for those who don't know what the Pandora Network is, um, it was kind of this without reveal. I'm trying not to reveal too much because I don't want to give away any spoilers. Um, it was this online kind of um, mystery that you basically take part in uh, across Facebook and there are different posts by these characters and you can interact with these characters to kind of solve this mystery um and help this agency um solve yeah what was going on um meg do you have anything else to uh, add to that i think you got it in a nutshell <laughs> I'm, I'm glad <laughs> what do you guys think i think that just about sums it all up really it's um yeah yeah, awesome yeah so uh these guys uh played uh characters in it and i'm really interested to know um what it was like playing characters <clears throat> through social media because it's obviously going to be very very different to playing uh it you know live like i want to know if like you were in the character's mindset or were you like sitting on the sofa with a, a, ki- <laughs> a can of fosters <laughs> just kind of going yeah i'll type this i want to know what kind of it was like I was saying before, it was very much like living a second life. <laughs> it was kind of, it's, I know, Lee, it's like nonstop, isn't it? Yeah, it's so every many week, it's just constant, so yes. It is constant. So, I mean, for me, I was like living Beatrice for a week. <laughs> oh, wow. That's awesome. <laughs> wow. I think the other thing as well is, especially like last week's show, is that we had people from Greece play, which were like oh, two hours wow. in front of us. Um, we had the UK playing it as we had some in um, Florida playing as we had some in LA playing as so we have to play in not just the UK time zone as well we end up playing in like, like four or five different time zones mm. yeah oh, that's... So it's, it... yeah that's crazy it's just, it, it, yeah, I, could, crazy. I can just imagine that especially because you know with the American time zone it's going to be wildly different were you up like very yeah. late at night sometimes uh, answering messages yes, and commenting <laughs> Oh, wow. Yeah, sometimes, or very early in the morning, it was just a matter of that, um, especially some of the uh, interactions on, like, private messages, mm. um, some of that were had, had to be sort of done, like, in the early mornings just to try and catch them, or we had to sort of time it to, to do it sort of, like, late at night, and so we knew that they were then up. So it, it, it was, yeah. were quite confusing sometimes just trying to get a gauge on when everybody were and where they were in the world. Yeah. We had to it a little yeah. bit. We've run it twice now, and for this one, we had a lot more active players from America. Mm. So we kind of shifted everything. So the whole kind of day happened a little bit later than how we did it in the previous run. So everything was like pushed back. So a lot of the oh, okay, like, yeah, yeah, later on, but also the clue drops we kind of shifted later on in the day as well. Mm. Oh, okay, that, yeah, that that's that's fair enough then. Yeah. Um, that you were like tailoring that to the different time zones. So having kind of these characters through this social media you said you were living her for like a week what kind of process did you go through to like kind of get into these characters like did you have a preset kind of scripted things that you had to do and like through those messages um was it more improvised like what was that kind of like the good thing is that me and Leah are both part of the creative team so we were involved in the story from the very beginning so we do like we really know the characters inside out but yeah. in terms of scripted there's there's nothing really scripted is there? there's the kind of clue drops that we drop in and those are kind of like formulaic and how that happens but in terms of our commenting and our interactions that's all like on the cuff isn't it, Lee? <laughs> yeah i mean we, we're quite lucky because the, there's there's like me and rosie that you're sort of the physical people that you will like converse with online um but we're quite lucky that we've got like virtually nina's like a little director behind the scenes and she's everywhere um oh, more wow. places that you know that she is but the fact is that she's everywhere um and she's all the time we've got a we've got a slack um account where 
literally she's filing everything in hour after hour after hour so if wow. anybody sort of so if you sort of think that if there's 25 people there's a lot of questions nina will sit there systematically and and sort of say so and so has asked this question so and so has asked that question somebody wow. has asked this question and then we've literally got i mean as, as rosie said we know the story back to front but there's a lot of questions that are brought up that we don't know the answer to so it, it mm. could be like What's so and so? How old is so and so? Where does he live? Where did he come from? <laughs> and and then the fact is that between us, then we have to sort of then, uh, if we haven't got the answers, we've got to create the characters as we move along. Oh which yeah. Is, which is handy now because the fact is that we also did that in the B to run. We also did it in the first showing. So when we got to the second showing, we've actually the characters have actually moved on from when they were initially. So we've got a lot of the answers. But you guys come up with lots of different questions. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we were very dedicated to finding out the truth. <laughs> we were. <laughs> um, but what I loved about it is, um, as you said, there were people all across the world doing it, um, being able yeah. to interact uh, with these, you know, people that never really would have a chance anywhere else um, to interact with them. And that's what I've really kind of loved about all these online experiences and you know escape rooms and etc is that you get to interact with people that you never would before so how did you kind of uh feel about that you know um interacting with such a wide range of people i know like me and meg we're quite young but there were some people there who were yeah. much older than us <laughs> I thought you were about to speak me. No, um, it's fab, isn't it? To have such a diverse group of people means that the theories and the speculation is always different. Everyone's yeah. got something to bring to the table, so it definitely yeah. keeps us interesting, keeps us on our toes, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, definitely. I mean, because it's on Facebook, it, it is relatively easy for us to sort of delve into your lives. Like, so... The re one of the reasons we sort of try to get you all together very early, sort of like a day, two days before the show starts, is that, you know, we can get all you ready so the show can start on time. But we, we can also do a little bit of homework on you guys as well. So, you know, and, and we sort of, the, you know, that we'll sort of say is like the first showing, not last week's, but the week before showing, we had like a, a guy that writes cat crime writing stories. Oh, wow. We have, we, we nice. have a guy that was sort of, so, so the, the amount of people that we can sort of just sort of, link back to and say right this is where they come from and you can see out through the week how everybody will look at the story in a slightly different way don't they rosie yeah absolutely and uh, you probably noticed that between the two characters we try to latch onto different ideas so we target yeah. different people without giving too much away i'm sure you know um what beatrice is certainly more interested in supernatural kind of elements yeah. and Felix is more um, like straight talking, straightforward. So between us, we try and capture different mindsets of the audience. Yeah, like I, yeah. I really enjoyed that, you know, these two characters, it wasn't always like, you know, pushing the story, pushing the story. There was like moments where you got to know these characters um, yeah. and like through messages. It was really nice to have those moments because it helped you connect to them more and it didn't feel like they were just kind of pawns in the story. They they had like their own lives and yeah, it was it was really fun to see that. Yeah. Yeah, I've got to agree. It was just really cool. Like just to see like the two characters like almost like mirroring each other. Like they were like, oh yeah, there's this one theory, but then there's this other thing. Oh, that's ridiculous and stuff like that. Just like seeing you bouncing off each other. It was really fun and really cool to see. Yeah. yeah, I think it was something, when we initially started off, it was one thing that we really wanted to do. We wanted to bring the characters to life. And so we wanted to get to a point where that you've all done the first, or you've done one of the shows. Mm. But, you know, that once the next show comes out, we want you to come back and sort of feel, oh, I know what Felix will do now, and I know what Beatrice will do now. Yeah. So it's like, you know, you're not just, it's as if you're not just going into a cold story where you're trying to work out who the characters are for the first two days. You know the characters already. You know that Felix will want to go to the pub, and you know that Beatrice thinks it's, you know, that it's something to do with supernatural. So it's you know the natural background of the stories before you even get there. Which in theory, sort of, we try to sort of make it more comfortable regarding sort of bringing you all in towards helping work the story out. Mm, yeah, like that. That was yeah. really good to see just how much background the characters had, and it was so established. 
Um, so just a, a final quick question uh, on this kind of little segment. Um, what was kind of the process like? Because you mentioned that you had a show the week before and then you had a kind of like a, a, a beta run. Um, did you have like any like rehearsals or kind of how did you prepare to, to kind of do this? Like you said, we did um, we did a test run. We had a much smaller group though in the test run, mm. didn't we? Uh, so we only we ran it with kind of eight people just to test out okay. the, the logical, like how things, you know, how the clues like followed together and whether it all made sense. So in that respect, we did do a test run, but we kind of found out it was very different with 25 people <laughs> than with eight people. So there was a lot of kind of learning on the fly going on with that. Yeah. 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 So, um, yeah. yeah, sorry, carry on. No, no, you're fine. No, it's okay, go on. No, no, no. I, I literally didn't know what I was going to say next, so definitely go <laughs> ahead. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the other thing is is that because, especially when we did the two runs, we run them really close to each other, so the turnaround were really, really quick. So mm. the, the fact is that we got to finish the show, sort of debrief everybody from the show, try to get a debrief between ourselves to see what's happened and what's not happened, because, as Rosie says, we've, we've only just started to do these sort of things so this the show last week was slightly different to the one the week before because there were certain things that we thought would work and didn't work and what we wanted to sort of um move a little bit um so it's always evolving even the the sort of burying the hatchet stories is evolving as as we're sort of learning with it really because mm. it is you know we want to sort of add lots lots more sort of like uh uh, different sort of things to it so we want to add videos to it and interactive as a live facebook moments and stuff like this but it's just baby steps that we're learning very quickly which we're having to mm. that that that's yeah. good though that you're kind of taking on um the experience that you've had as well and and helping that move it forward as well which is really fantastic to hear um, but yeah, thank you so, so much for joining us for um, this no, little segment you. here. Um, just talking to kind of like what the experience was. Um, so yeah, thank you so much, guys. Thank you. It was awesome no having you. Nice, thank you. Thanks for having us. See ya. No bye worries. Bye. See you See later. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Um, so yeah, um, we'll yeah. see. You, you don't worry we guys need to you turn off <laughs> yeah you guys you guys can you guys can go now you are you are free to go <laughs> um because me and meg will continue talking um we uh right. so uh, you guys are free to go right. um sorry i should have made that clear guys. but see you guys later we will talk <laughs> afterwards you were yeah. see you later bye. guys bye bye, bye. bye. Okay, sorry, okay. I feel like I should have made that much more clear at the start. <laughs> In hindsight, I've yeah. got good, great I'm power right. of hindsight. Uh, not very good at forward thinking. Um, but yeah, that was fantastic anyway. to see. Anyway. Yeah, they're, they're yeah. behind the scenes and uh, kind of see that interest on it. Uh, but yeah, Meg, we, we had a really good time, didn't we, doing it? Oh, we did, yeah. Yeah, I, I know Massive. for a fact um, when different things evolved and, you know, me and Meg were messaging each other like oh my god this has just happened like we were like <laughs> all the time we like, this has happened that has happened have you seen this have you seen that what's going on and then i was freaking out yeah we'll, like, oh we'll, god, we'll oh definitely god, oh definitely get to that bit <laughs> without revealing too much because there was a really epic moment that meg had um but before we get to that um we have asked uh, a couple questions um, to in incognito experiences and they have provided us uh, with some fantastic answers so uh, we're going to go to that and we're going to see our oh, perfect um, I'll, I'll, I'll pop this right right here perfect um, we're going to have a look at some of these questions so first of all their, their very first question is boom how long have you been preparing for Pandora and this is their response. We've been having so much fun putting together and running the Pandora Network. Thanks so much for inviting me to talk about it. The Pandora Network is a collaboration between Incognito Experiences, Faceless Ventures and Nick Hudson Music. The team have been working really hard to design and produce the whole show really, really rapidly. Believe it or not, we only started working together on this back in mid-March when the UK lockdown was first announced. When that happened, a lot of live theatre had to be postponed or cancelled. Lee from Faceless Ventures got in touch with me and said, 
hey, do you want to do something collaborative to produce something online and remote that an, that an audience can do safely at home? And for me, that's where this all started. So we've not been working on this for very long. Because we were all in lockdown ourselves, we had to assemble the team entirely online using collaboration tools like Slack and Skype. And we started throwing around ideas of what we could create that could be entirely remote and lockdown friendly for our audience. There were so many ideas in that Slack channel. It was a chaos of creativity, uh, but it was really inspiring to see so many great ideas being formed. After a few days, one idea started to emerge as the favourite, and it was this idea that became the Pandora Network. Yeah, so I'm not sure if you heard that, Meg, <laughs> because... Uh, no, I it, didn't. <laughs> I do promise you there was something on the screen. I, I did make sure oh, we weren't just nodding I, and smiling. I believe you. Um, there was audio you, playing, because we have made that mistake before. Um, but yeah, she effectively said that they had started working on this in March um, and formed a group um, chat and lots of ideas uh, popped up, which is um, really interesting that they, they kind of started so quickly uh, since the theatres were definitely shut down um they were straight on it which i think is just fantastic you know yeah being able to bring uh, an online experience so quickly um i know i'm amazed it's just like such a quick turnaround and for such a high quality event i was just like what? yeah yeah it's they she even said it's been a very quick turnaround and i'm really impressed what they've been able to do in such a short time frame um so we're going to move on to the, the next question here is uh, what is it like interacting online? We, we have spoken a little bit with the uh, characters and what it was like for them, Lee and Rosie, um, but this is her insight here. In the Pandora Network, our characters interact with the audience entirely online, either through group chats or private messages or phone calls run through Facebook or Facebook Messenger. This format of interaction does pose some challenges for our actors playing the characters, but it also has its benefits. Given in any one show we have about 25 people taking part, it's a challenge for our actors playing our lead characters to keep up with everybody's comments and posts on the Facebook group to make sure that everyone that interacts with the characters gets some interaction back. But on the whole, I think we've managed that really well, such that the more that our audience put into the experience, the more they get back. And while some guests can choose to just read along with the story and read other people's comments and not interact a lot with the characters, they will absolutely get a full and engaging story doing this. But guests that do interact with the characters more and throw themselves into the investigation more will get an equal reward back in terms of the interactions they receive. And using social media as a platform for this really allows us to do this and to match the level of interaction with how much interaction individuals really want. Although interacting entirely online has additional challenges for our actors playing the characters, in establishing their character and really conveying who their character and their personality is, we found that it actually works really, really well. Although they don't have the ability to use body language, for instance, like you might with a live in-person show, we found that our characters have still really come to life online and our audiences have been really engaging and building relationships with these characters. In part, I think the social media platform makes this easier. People are used to interacting with near strangers or meeting new people online and having conversations. So it feels very comfortable for our audience to engage with our characters in this way. For some people who haven't done immersive or interactive theatre before, the idea of interacting with characters in a live theatre production can sometimes feel a bit intimidating and sometimes people aren't really sure what to do. But with this format, it's really easy to interact with a character on Facebook. And so this format of experience, I believe, is really opening up immersive and interactive theatre to people who might never have tried it before in a really easy and unintimidating way. Yeah, so um, she just mentioned there the, the kind of key um, points was the fact that interacting through social media really helps kind of open it up to, um, you know, strangers being able to talk to each other. And she's exactly right. Like, you know, uh, people are much more comfortable Definitely. talking online. Um, and yeah. uh, as she said, yeah, like, the more you kind of interact with these characters and comment, the 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 more you'll get out of it, which is a hundred percent true. You know, the more you delve into it. Um, I think Meg, you had a fantastic experience. If you want to delve into that a little bit, without giving away uh, too yeah. much, but you had a really Not fantastic moment. I wouldn't. I would say fantastic, but also quite scary. Yeah. Um. So basically, 
I'm not going to say at what point in the week this was, but I got into a private message group with one of the agents and a couple of other analysts. And it turns out that the a certain character had sent a threatening voice message incriminating the agents, us three, and saying, you think I don't know, things like that, really freaking us out. So here's me, paranoid as hell, thinking he's got my number, he's going to be able to phone me, he's going to do this, he's going to do that. I was freaking out. Mm. And we're thinking, is this going on? Is that going on? What the heck? But I was genuinely, because I was so invested in the story, I was genuinely terrified. Mm. Yeah. I was genuinely terrified. I was like, oh, God. (laughs) Yeah, like, because it's through social media and, you know, um, they they add you... You can't put a face. You you can't put a face to that person. Yeah. And that just makes it even more terrifying. Yeah, and, and it's kind of you are open on social media so they have access to look at what you've posted on your account and it's kind of like oh god what are they gonna dish out on me like are they gonna search through my profile and you know and ring me and actually do these things so it that was really interesting you know um scared as hell yeah i i i would have loved to see them like perhaps even go deeper into that and actually take things from like like our social channels and stuff and you know perhaps and, like, try and threaten us with it or like phone calls and voice messages and things like that because that's what i was terrified of I'm, yeah. i literally had my phone right next to me and i'm thinking it's gonna go off any second it's gonna mm-hmm. go off it's, he's gonna phone me or she's gonna phone me that person's gonna phone me ah! <laughs> yeah for sure because like because it was terrified all on facebook there's kind of that tiny little bit of safety net of just like okay it's gonna stay it's gonna stay here they're not gonna um but that yeah. that must have really thrown you off and been quite it scary did. it threw me it threw me for a loop because i thought why am i adding to, getting added to this new group and then i read the message and i'm like oh yeah crap. but every and I'm thinking why us as yeah. well yeah why just us three specifically mm. i'm thinking it's because maybe we were contributing a lot we mm. were high profile and that's why they spotted us yeah i i that definitely well, goes man. with you know the more you contribute the more you get from it and that's so entirely true um but you can still that's really really to... enjoy it when even if yeah. you're just reading through the story and uh, enjoying it how it yeah. is as well um it can be enjoyed but, however yeah. kind of interactively you want um but yeah, yeah it's it's been really really great um so moving on yeah. to the uh next question is where did the inspiration come from um so we'll have a listen here The inspiration came from some of our favourite murder mystery or supernatural TV shows and films. We've all watched these programmes before and found ourselves shouting at the television because we think we've worked out the mystery or we've worked out who the murderer was before the investigator characters have. And we love the idea of creating something where the audience doesn't just watch or listen or read along, but that they actually get to be part of the investigation they essentially get to be characters in the story and they get to solve the mystery themselves. Some people have described the Pandora network as a cross between the X-Files and Miss Marple, but where you get to be part of the action and solve the mystery. We certainly wanted to warmly celebrate all the tropes from these sorts of shows that we are fond of, but at the same time as doing that, we wanted to give the audience something completely new, a sort of mystery that they haven't looked into before. In our first story in the Pandora Network series called Burying the Hatchet, I don't want to say too much about the story as we're planning other runs of that story and I don't want to give away too many spoilers for anyone that plans to take part. But in that story, we decided to explore a really unusual Japanese mythology as part of the mystery. I'd come across this mythology whilst researching for another production and I found it really fascinating and thought it would make the basis for a really, really unusual mystery story that people would not have come across before. So we wanted to give audiences something brand new that they could get their teeth into, something intellectually challenging, but not emotionally challenging, something puzzling, but fun and warm and sometimes humorous, and in the style of a mystery story that we know that so many people enjoy and that we really enjoy ourselves. Yeah, so um, she just mentioned that uh, the um, inspiration came from a lot of uh, mystery crime mystery uh shows um she mentioned x files oh, yeah. being kind of one of them which is a fantastic show um but yeah um 
she also mentioned um about the uh japanese mythology um she she said that yeah. so i take that as a i'm okay to talk about it not too much though into details um, obviously but yeah learning about um kind of the mythology that was kind of used in the story was really interesting because i uh, it was never heard of it before right and me neither when i found out like it was like a legit thing and people were able to research into it that made it even more greater because it was something that you know wasn't just fictional like you could go out and actually do additional stuff um and bring it back and bring your research into it so i thought that was really fantastic bring that element into it yeah that's what i did like as soon as i saw a certain word i was like what the fluff is that (laughs) so i googled it and it was a legit thing when i read into it i was like what the fudge and how it linked i was just like wait a minute wait a minute wait a minute wait a minute so i just popped a theory out and then i got some feedback and then some people like oh mumbo jumbo but then a lot of people like oh it's it's plausible because from what i found out i'm just like this fits yeah yeah so that that i really loved that aspect of it um so moving on to uh our last question here is do you plan to continue this format after lockdown? And I'm really excited to hear this answer because I'm, I'm interested very as well. Interested. We are absolutely going to continue this after lockdown. Although this collaboration came about at the start of lockdown, the idea of the Pandora Network is much bigger than that. It's a new format of immersive theatre that I think really, really works for a very wide audience. And not to mention, we have so many stories to tell. The fictional town of Pondermere, where we've set the Pandora Network, is a whole world of mystery to explore. We are already partway through pre-production of the next story in the Pandora Network series. The next story is called The Nightlight Circus, and without giving too much away, I can tell you that a strange circus comes to town in Pondermere and brings with it a brand new mystery to solve. We're planning to launch that in July, with tickets on sale in June, so please watch out on our Instagram, Twitter and Facebook for announcements about that. If you haven't yet done the first story called Burying the Hatchet, don't worry, you can do the stories in any order, so you can still enjoy the Nightlight Circus even if you haven't yet done Burying the Hatchet. But equally, we're looking into dates that we can do future runs of Burying the Hatchet for those that missed it. We also have another four or five story concepts for future Pandora Network stories, and we're also exploring a wider range of formats, so watch this space. There's a whole world to explore in Pondermere, so stay safe, visit Pondermere. That's so, so cool. So they are definitely going to continue this. Um, not yes. only with the same story, but um, they want, they're going to carry on the kind of Pandora Network story um, and have new mysteries. Um, because, you know, this kind of whole online immersive kind of theatre has been so great. And I definitely think it should continue after uh, lockdown. Definitely. Yeah, because just the way you can connect with people, people that wouldn't be comfortable... Yeah physically taking part can take part and be immersed from the comfort in of their, their own, own time home. yeah own time in well. their own time yeah yeah which has really some, been great yeah. i feel like some people maybe may feel pressured if they have to do it in a different environment they may feel pressured to take part pressure to do it in a certain mm-hmm. time frame but when you're at home you might be able to see it at nine o'clock in the morning and then like say 12 hours later or however many hours later after you've done your work for the day or whatever you can just go back to it and focus on it so you can just do it whenever you want to and that's really really cool yeah it certainly gives people the uh, flexibility and i think you know for people who have like a very busy kind of like job or lifestyle and work uni about, yeah uni university students uni. for sure um it's been really us great too. <laughs> yeah it has because that's you know too fitting around classes and stuff that you have to do we've been able to fit it in when we're able to Uh, there's no pressure of oh gosh i need to do this at this time because you know you can work around it um so no there wasn't that pressure which was which i really really liked yeah which has definitely been really good um so yeah now i guess we should really kind of move on to what we thought of the experience our entire experience happening um because they will be bringing um bury the hatchet back they're looking at doing future dates for it and they said that you do not have to do them in any chronological order you can do them however you kind of like um so i'm excited to do other ones in the future yeah Yeah. 
I'm really excited. I'd love to do it. Yeah. So, um, Meg, let's start off um, with uh, kind of initial thoughts when we first kind of joined at the start of the week. I was really excited. I was. Mm. I was thinking I didn't know what to expect at all. Mm. I just thought it's a really good experience. It'll be something else I can do because apart from uni work, I literally have nothing <laughs> to do. Yeah. So I thought it's something else for me to do. Keep me busy. Probably learn something new. Meet new people. I'm really, really excited. What about you? Yeah, um, I found that as well. Like I was very excited to see this kind of format in action because I was very intrigued about how it's going to work through social media. You know how we'd receive different information, and I, I really enjoyed it. You know because it wasn't just you know just posts through Facebook. There were you know things that we could listen to. You know things that we yeah. could look at. So I was really glad that there was lots of different media that we could interact with. Definitely. Yeah. Like audio files. Audio files were really useful. Mm. And like documents as well, like physical documents you could like download and read and mm. things like that. Yeah. Yeah, that that was definitely fun to engage with. Yeah. Um, so as the kind of week went on and um, we were interacting more, how did you find like interacting with uh, other characters and other, you know, kind of agents, let's say, uh, in the story? I find it pretty easy, to be fair. Because, mm. like, we were all there for the same thing. We all wanted to really enjoy ourselves and get involved. So a lot, some of us shared the same theory. So a group of us would go get together and we'd be talking about that theory and then the agents would jump in. And with the personal interactions and the messaging and things like that mm. from the agents, I really enjoyed that bit because... I wasn't expecting it, but then I got a private message saying, can we chat about this that you found? And I'm like, yeah. So I think it was a good 10 minute conversation. Oh, wow. About the theory that I found and going into more detail. And that was just really interesting and really fun. Mm, that That's so good. Yeah, I, I loved being able to um, talk to loads of different people and being able to just kind of like click with people really quickly. Yeah. Because um, I suppose, you know, as we mentioned before that talking through social media is a lot easier um so there is no that kind of awkwardness that you know you're like you're working with people you don't know and you don't know what you can say but that kind of breaks it's broken down in this there isn't really that kind of worry or stress and stuff you are really able yeah. to just have fun with it and interact with people um and i really enjoyed that and i loved the the character interactions um there yeah was a, i did yeah there was a moment where it, it wasn't like quite part of the story but we all got into this group chat yes, together and did this I'm, kind of activity i know and that was just really fun because it 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 was something fun to do and while it wasn't kind yeah. of part of the plot line necessarily it was just a great way a to interact fun. with the characters and i'm a sucker for good characters like i yeah when there's a good character see the agents mm. agents were in character all the time and they were like bouncing off each other like da, 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 da. like a it was like a spat almost like a bit of a mini argument type thing wasn't it <laughs> yeah like, and i i love it they... was just so fun yeah and when we were just like it was good it was good and when they interacted with each other as well um it really added to that because i was initially concerned that yeah. like, when we we're going to start off with they would just kind of be separate posts but it really was all connected together really well yeah. Um, so I really yeah, like they were both. Mm. Yeah, all the agents were interacting with each other and like putting comments on each other's posts and talking to each other and with all the theories that were flying around and all the information that was flying about. It was just crazy. Yeah, yeah. Um, speaking of that, I highly recommend if you are going to do this experience, because um, I accidentally uh, did this. Go into your Facebook settings and and turn make... on all notifications yes because i my facebook is a bit stupid and it doesn't do that automatically <laughs> so i'll, I'll no, be it doesn't like with mine either yeah it's it's really annoying so uh, i i would go onto facebook one day and have like 50 things pop up and i was like oh my gosh like when did this happen <laughs> <laughs> um so then yeah, I'd, I'd... i just put my notifications on from the start and was like oh something new okay let's have a look and then there's like 50 comments and i'm just like wait yeah oh so gosh. double <laughs> triple check that you have your notifications on because you know the you might miss something massive yeah and it's 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 important to kind of like make sure that you kind of the events that happen that day you kind of see them unfold during that day 
just because of the way that Facebook works when it puts the latest post up top. You don't want to spoil it for yourself if you haven't seen the day before. Um, but yeah. yeah, definitely make sure that, you know, you're looking into it every day. But, you know, there, I really enjoyed that, the fact that there was something every day. There was n- never really a yeah. time when I was like, oh, when's the next bit coming? In the in a sense... Yeah, of... there was always a day that you could do something, like mm. um, whether it be research or reading things, listening to something, just trying to find more information and getting your ideas out there. There was always something to be done in that day. Mm. It was it was really good as well, the sense of I was kind of always looking forward to when the next yeah, bit would be I out of well. the story. Same. Because um, I, I knew it was only a kind of week long and I was like, oh gosh, like getting to the end of the week like do do we have any extra leads like what's going on and like i was generally coming like concerned like oh god is this are we going to be able to solve this mystery in time (laughs) because i'm wondering (laughs) like like that too yeah like i I was just like are we gonna do this (laughs) yeah because i i was wondering um if there was multiple endings i should have asked this um you know if if we don't succeed is there a non-succeeding ending in things yeah. um so that like be... what would happen if something didn't happen or they didn't do this or fine do that you know what i mean yeah well like like especially towards the end like mm. with everything that went down mm. i'm just like what if those events hadn't happened yeah what like, would have happened i'd be interested to see as well how it unfolds with different people and maybe if yeah. you know um the um kind of other audience members let's say i don't know how to describe it uh, <laughs> people who took part um if they yeah. didn't pick up on certain things or they didn't you know say certain things how would that unfold because i know think of certain things yeah because i know our group was definitely on it with the theories and we were on it yeah we were like we're gonna solve this like we've got all these different theories and it's like bouncing off each other so that was really really good fun yeah, to do that it was so good um so what did you think obviously without spoiling anything uh, about the ending uh, how did you feel about it for me it was intense mm. and then like i feel it was a little bit abrupt it mm. was like oh this is happening and then oh we've got the person and we're like okay mm. that was quick maybe it might be nice to like see the interrogation and get the chance to ask questions for that or and yeah have like like they said they may be doing facebook live things and getting videos so maybe that could be something they could put in in the future maybe like an interrogation tape for example yeah yeah for sure like i i definitely but i still enjoyed it yeah i still enjoyed it for sure like i i loved the kind of tension that built up near the ending definitely. it was just more so for this one uh, yeah you? hello <laughs> <laughs> you were you were bricking it <laughs> but i i really loved it but i i do agree yeah it did feel maybe like it ended a tiny bit abruptly um because i remember at some point um one of the agents posted um saying oh god are we going to be able to solve this in a week and i was actually thinking like oh my gosh is it going to go on for longer than a week are we um are we going to (laughs) so yeah i I, like i i think maybe the kind of add a couple more days onto it just so the ending yeah you know or or adds like Meg said maybe some things where there is a live uh, kind of interrogation thing or um, you can ask questions and stuff. yeah and see kind of that ending um, unfold a tiny bit more uh, before it ends just adding a little bit more to it but other than that you know what I, I, I really did enjoy it I thought it was a great top notch yeah it was so good it was it was good good fun um and yeah it's it's been great to have something to take your mind off what's going on you're like yeah you know some days you see all this news and you're just like oh god the lockdown happening yeah, and all and, the cra- and all the personal craziness that you might have going on and... yeah and it's just like you see this notification you're like oh great crime it's yeah. <laughs> like because like, i've had like just stuff piling on top of me and i'm yeah. just like oh goodness sake i just need a break mm. cut me some slack for five minutes for goodness sake but then I, I was in this pandora thing and i was just it was like an escapism almost a bit like when i do mm. my writing and stuff it's just an escapism for me yeah it's really it, good it really was good because it allows you to kind of put yourself in a character almost as well you know 
fulfill yeah. those um fantasies of you being a secret agent uh, you yeah you can join you can join the pandora <laughs> network um so be- join them like the ranks of like james bond or yeah. something like that or whoever your favorite agent is or whatever yeah <laughs> so before we go i'm just going to show you a, a couple links uh, to their websites and uh the, show you the guys that help made it uh so um what we're gonna do boom boom here we go is quick, this... quick, quick question while you're doing that yes what was your best bit oh gosh what was my favorite bit um i really enjoyed the activity we did on the group messenger because i i, love I loved the live aspect of it um yeah and kind of things that happened in real time i found really good they were my favorite moments like when i'd get a reply straight away i'd be like oh they replied really quickly yeah, and i'd like get really excited all the personal personal interactions i really enjoyed because it just made yeah. the experience for me more special because like it was my interaction with that person or it was this thing involved me so that was really really nice yeah i, I definitely agree yeah um so this uh website we're seeing now at the top of our screens uh is the pandora network this is their website if you go on it you can kind of see the basic outline of uh, what the pandora network is it, it shows you a nice little welcome video um then you can have a look um at the different agents there and um the town pondermere um it's so full of detail and so full of you know what's going on um and the the people that created this experience, Incognito uh, Experiences, partnered with Faceless Ventures here and Nick Hudson Music. They worked together to create kind of this entire social media immersive uh, experience. So definitely check those guys out because you know there will be more stuff coming from them, and it will be very very exciting to see. And definitely, I'm very much looking forward to it. Um, so yeah, if there is any questions, let us know. But uh, do you have I any? Just asked. Yeah, that's fantastic. Uh, so if you do um, have any final words, Meg, about it, uh, what would you say about it? Just a bit of an addition with the, all the characters, like all the field agents. They were just incredible. Like mm. they all guided us through the case, listened to each of our theories. Even though some of them, some of the field agents were like, "Oh, that's a bunch of mumbo jumbo. That's ridiculous." La 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 la. They were all listened to, acknowledged, and investigated further. So no theory was just thrown out the window because it was considered rubbish or whatever. Mm. Yeah, and that's what I really liked because they explored all avenues, listened to everybody, and that just made it awesome. Yeah, yeah, it, it definitely was great. Um, so I think just to say um, the last couple of words is definitely check these guys out. You know, definitely. In, in times of all over the news, theatre is having a tough time. Um, very tough time so to see success stories come out of this and new ways of theatre coming about is really lovely to see and been really fantastic to take part in so thank you so much for allowing us to do this experience because it was great fun thank you and uh, be sure to uh, tune into those guys website see uh, keep your eyes peeled for new events that's going to be happening Um, and we will see you next week with our next Picking Brains podcast See you guys later. Thank you so much.